The gospel according to Matthew. You don't have to worry about standing this morning. You can stand if you want to. You can sit if you want to. Just be in his presence. But I want to warn you. I'm not listening to you. I don't care how you feel about it. If I start and he tells me to stop, that's just going to be it. Matthew, the first chapter. Starting at the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Daughter, don't you rush. You take your time right where you are. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, what? For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took him unto his wife and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the few moments that are ours, Rainy just stay right there with us. Y'all stay up here and don't worry about what's happening down there. For the few moments that are ours, we want to talk to you from the thought, great commitment. Great commitment. This morning, with the Lord's help, I want to begin what should be our final preaching series of the year. This series is entitled, A Recipe for Greatness. Yes. And although we've spent a large portion of this year understanding what it is to be great, that is, God-focused, relevant, evangelistic, anointed, and teachable, in God's eyes, we will conclude the year looking at not only the components of greatness, but the results of greatness. The first result that we'll look at in this series is commitment. Somebody say commitment. Recently, I was watching a video, and in the video, it was of a herd of elephants. And there was a baby elephant that had gotten caught up in a small water trough. The elephant found itself on its back, but could not turn over to be upright. And so, because the herd cared for the baby, many members of the herd of elephants attempted to get the elephant back upright. One by one, including the mother, Brother Quick, they all tried to get the baby elephant upright, but just couldn't seem to turn it just, just so. Over a course of time, uh, they began to one by one give up on the effort to get the baby elephant out of the trough of water. It was not that the water was going to drown the elephant. That wasn't the danger, but danger was lurking. Because off to, the, off to the side, there was a pride of lions. 
beginning to circle for this baby elephant. You do know that whenever trouble is around, your enemy is close by. Yes, right. I wish I could talk in here. Right. The, the, the lions began to circle, but the elephants hadn't completely given up. But one by one, when they had done all they could do, they, they began to leave. They were all gone, including the mother of the baby. I wish I had time to deal with it, Carl, but even loved ones sometimes give up on us. But this, this instance, this instance, there was one elephant that was left. This was not the mother or the father of the baby, but the elephant that remained refused to quit on this elephant. It, it almost embodied uh, uh, a characteristic of commitment. They, this elephant was committed to getting the baby elephant out, and after the first try, she didn't get it. The second try, she still didn't get it on the third try. Baseball would say three, tri three strikes and you're out. The baby elephant was still stuck in the trough. It took on the fourth try. If I had time, I'd tell somebody, Deacon Surly, that, that, that four reminds me that it was after four days that Lazarus had been in the grave when Jesus showed up. Because surely after four days, his body stinketh by now. And there's some folk that think you are down for the fourth time and they're ready to give up on you but if you know that God doesn't care anything about how many times he's the God of not just a second chance but of another chance yeah. on the fourth time this this one last this one last elephant pulled the baby elephant out of the trough and and the mother came back excited and I was glad to see the reunion but what I was more excited was to see the embodiment of somebody being committed. Because the truth of the matter is commitment means that I am dedicated to something that I won't give up on. I wish I could say that again. I, if, if, I'm, if I'm committed to it, whether it's an organization, whether it's an individual or an institution, I'm, I'm committed to it, which means I will not quit on that that I am committed to. There are some, A.J., that would argue that in this postmodern era, we deal with a lack of commitment. That because marriages are falling by the wayside, because people can't stay on jobs, because attendance at church tends to wane, that we have commitment issues. And I would argue, although that looks cute, that's not the truth. I would argue we don't have commitment issues because we committed to some stuff. We committed to Black Friday. We're committed to Small Business Saturday. We're committed to Cyber Monday. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. We're committed to our organizations. We're committed to our cars and our houses. We're even committed to our sports franchises. Let me show you what commitment looks like. See, when you're committed, you make a choice. You, you can't be for one and the other. Watch this. So if you're committed to the skins, All right, come on. Why, why? you can't be committed to them boys. Am I right about it? If you're committed to Virginia State, it's hard to be committed to Virginia Union. But if you're committed to Jesus, It's hard to be committed to the world. And I'm wondering, is there anybody in here that says, I don't have commitment issues. I am sold out completely and totally for the red team. Well, why are they the red team? Because it was the blood of Jesus that came streaming down the crimson team of Jesus is who I'm committed to. And here's all I want you to know for the few moments that I have with you today. Commitment means I will stay when others will go. Let me also say this, PJ. We don't have commitment to church. We're more committed sometimes, not here, other places. We're more committed to church than to God. We're more committed to the institution 
than we are to the individual. Because he didn't come to establish a religion. He came to establish a relationship. But when he wants to meet us at fellowship hour or, or at Bible study, he can't find us. But on Sunday morning, talking about commitment. The text this morning will help us understand that there are times when commitment is required, is required when others want to quit. I won't, I won't insult you, it is a very familiar passage. It is, it is the introduction on this first Sunday in Advent to the narrative of the birth of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And, and, and it is designed to help us understand this morning the importance of commitment to the things of God. But, but it, it does raise this question, Chuck, how, how, with everything else that's pulling at my time, my talent, and my resources, how do I remain committed to God? I think that's a, good, that's a fair question, so let me try to, try to answer. The first, the first way you remain committed to God in this postmodern era is you got to be under, you have to understand that conflict is coming. Yeah. Conflict is coming. Oh, yeah. Here we are in the text, and the Bible says that this fellow by the name of Joseph, this is Joseph that is uh, a good Hebrew boy. He is, he is a spouse. That means what we would call present day, he's engaged to a, to a young woman by the name of Mary, and, and, and he has prepared for this assignment. He's got a house set aside for them to live in, and he's got a dowry set aside because he's got to pay her father, uh, do wages to have his daughter. I don't have time to deal with it raining, but, but what happened to the time that before a young man asked a young woman for her hand in marriage, he had to go by the house at least to ask for permission. Now, they can come by, scoop you up, blow the horn, and come, let you just come run out to the door, and they never come in and say, good afternoon to the parents. That ain't right. That's right. You ought to be respectful enough to come and knock on the door and say, sir, may I take your, y'all ain't gonna say nothing in here? He, he, he had prepared for the assignment. He, can't you just see Joseph? He got his little house in the cul-de-sac. It's ready for the, for the lady to come and, and it's not like today because when they were engaged, when they were espoused, um, that settled it. It wasn't, it wasn't like she could give the ring back or he could take the ring back. No, no, no. When it was, when it was said there was a commitment, that meant we were going to stick it out. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but the text says that this man that has prepared for the assignment ends up with something he did not plan for. The conflict is, I gave her my ring, but she's carrying somebody else's baby. I, I know, I know, I know that doesn't bother you because you are a deep theologian and a great scholar. You know the end of the story, but the practical nature is, there are times in life where my plans and God's plans don't meet. There's sometimes that the thing that I thought was gonna happen didn't go my way. I know y'all don't have them kind of problems. Um, um, my wife told me I could tell the story. When we were in Durham, the last house I bought, the last house we built, I told her, y'all heard this story before, get everything you want from the rooter to the tutor because this is gonna be the last one. I ain't building no more, I'm not buying no more. Get it all right now and sure enough, she tried to break me. <laughs> she got it all. Less than a year later, though I planned to be there for a while, God said, leave the cul-de-sac. Leave the five-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath and go to a place you can't find on the map called Heathville. Go get you a double wide that when the wind blows, it rocks with the wind. Go find you a double wide that, that don't have all the holes covered 
So sometimes when the field get cut, the mice come inside and run around. Y'all ain't gonna help me. I had a plan, but God had a purpose. And I need somebody to know that if you're gonna be committed to God, you've got to prepare for conflict to show up in your life. You can't be a great Christian and not expect some great trouble. You can't be a great running back and don't run up against some great defenses. You can't be a great teacher and don't have to read some hard books. You can't be a great saint and don't sometimes have some hard days. But is there anybody in here that knows like the old church would say, no matter what I'm up against, he's a battle axe in the time of a trouble. He's a, do I have a witness that I don't have to fight my conflict by myself because the Lord is on my side. Please understand that if you're going to be committed, if you're going to have great commitment, you've got to understand that conflict is coming. It's almost like Al Roker. If Al Roker say it's going to rain, you better get your umbrella. And I'm here to tell you, you can't be on this walk with the Lord and not expect some conflict. When I have, I'm trying to press, when I have premarital counseling, I try to tell them, it's good to be booed up right now. But there's some days coming. I wish I could talk plain in here. There's some days that being booed up won't solve. Conflict is coming. Yeah. When, when, when the bills don't match the income, nah. conflict is coming. Yeah. When the Coca-Cola bottle turns into a two liter, <laughs> conflict is coming. Yeah. When gravity starts to take over for you and him, y'all yeah. ain't gonna help me in here. Yeah. Conflict is coming. Yeah. When he used to be like Ric Flair and call himself a 60 minute man and he turned to a six minute man, conflict. Yeah. Y'all ain't going to help me today. That's what's wrong. Y'all don't want to talk about truth in church. Talk about it. Let me press on. How do I remain? Bring your mind in. Bring your mind in. Bring your mind in. How, how do I remain committed? I've got to be prepared for the fact that conflict is coming. Secondly, please catch this. You, you, you can be committed to the things of God when you know not only that conflict is coming, but you must have character in crisis. Yeah. Here's the conflict. The conflict is what I planned isn't going with my purpose. Here's the crisis. Now, she is with child, and, and anybody that's ever seen a woman with child or been a woman with child knows that at some point what you carry in has to show. Yeah, yeah. And the crisis is this good Jewish boy cannot be found with a woman that's been with someone else, that's right. let alone the fact that she's carrying another man's baby. The crisis is everything I hoped for Everything I planned, the 401k that I thought would be there when I retired, the friends that were going to be my ride or die, the person that stood before the preacher, my mama, and the Lord that said, till death do us part, is gone. Come on. And the crisis is, what do I do now? The crisis is, they got on Facebook, scandalized your name. Well, what do you do? When, when they put all your business on front street. Can I show you what Joseph did? Yeah. I said, can I show you what Joseph did? Yes, In the face of crises, he still has character. Yeah. Because although he has the right to not only put her away, he has the right to have her stoned for carrying another man's baby. Right. But as opposed to doing what he could do, he shows some character, character to do what he should do. Because at its definition, character is what you do when no one is watching. 
character in your Sunday morning behavior. That's just stuff. But character is on Monday morning when you meet them demons in the office. How you deal with them. Character is on Wednesday when everybody in the house has gotten on your last nerve and colorful metaphors start coming to your mouth. Y'all not going to help me in here. Character is on Friday when everybody else is getting turned up at happy hour and you say, I'm just happy in Jesus. Character is what you do when crisis shows up. And Joseph teaches us that in the face of crises, I must show my character. Well, Joseph, what was your character? I won't do what I could do. I'll just do WWJG. What would Jesus do? And he has compassion on Mary. But can I ask a question in here? Is there anybody that's ever had to show some character when things get rough and the crises show up? What is your character? Can I tell you some character traits? You ought to have some temperance and some long suffering and some love and some kindness and some peace. But show sure enough, when my character gets questioned, the prayer warrior in me comes out. When my character gets questioned, the praiser in me shows up. Because when I think about what I'm up against, I'm reminded of who's on my side. And me and God are a majority all by ourselves. The character of being a child of the Most High gives me hope to know that somehow, somehow, I'm going to make it. I'm done. I need you to know that crises is coming. I need you to please, ma'am, please, sir, have character in the face of crises. But finally, you've got to have some courage to complete. I'm done. Watch the text. Um, um, the angel says to Joseph, listen, uh, Joseph, son of David, the baby that Mary is carrying, he is to be called Emmanuel, for he is God with us. The significance of that, Deacon Evans, is when the angel refers to Joseph as son of David, it is a reminder of his legacy. You see, the Christ, the Messiah, had to come through the Davidic line. And when the angel reminded jo Joseph exactly who he was, it helped him have character in the face of crisis. And he was able to complete uh, what he was up against. Courage is overcoming in the face of danger. And although Joseph had some dangerous days ahead, he still had courage to complete it. Helps remind me of a story of a fellow by the name of Kenneth Gordy. You don't know Kenneth Gordy. Uh, his stage name is Rockwell. Now you don't know Kenneth Gordy, but you know his daddy, Barry Gordy. All right. Barry Gordy's baby boy was named Kenneth Gordy, but his stage name was Rockwell, and all Rockwell wanted to do was record an album. So being the good father that he was, Barry Gordy took him to the studio. They get in the studio, and Brooke Clark, as a father, Barry makes a horrifying discovery. Mm. The one thing that his son wants, which is to record an album, there's a problem because his son can't sing. <laughs> Barry Gordy, who is a renowned producer, sees that the apple has fallen far from the tree. Yeah. But Rockwell recorded a song, some of you may remember it, says something like this, I always feel like somebody's watching me. Um, yeah, you know it, uh-huh, that one. Just come right on out with it while I'm preaching, just come right on, it's all right. It's a community event, just come right on. So, spoiler alert, you know that it got recorded because the left, the right side over here already knows the song. What you don't know 
is the hook of the song that we all know. I always feel like somebody's watching me. It's not Rockwell. Because Barry Gordy found out that his son couldn't sing. But Barry Gordy knew a fella by the name of Michael Jackson. So Barry had Michael stop by the studio to help his son with what he couldn't handle. That's just like a good father. When you find yourself in a situation that you can't handle, a father will be committed enough to go get you some help for what you couldn't handle for yourself. And one day, on a hill called Calvary, my father saw that there was a situation that I couldn't handle for myself. Michael Jackson couldn't do it. Smokey Robinson couldn't do it. Even Luther couldn't handle it. But there's a man by the name of Jesus that handled what I couldn't handle. And is there anybody in here that wants to thank the Father for being committed to us that he would send 40 and two generations his only begotten son in the name of Jesus. Won't he see about you? Won't he care for you? Won't he deliver you? Shout yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph teaches us that just because the going gets tough doesn't mean that we have to quit. We have to remain committed. And there's no one or nothing worth being committed to more so than our Savior. Maybe there's somebody in here today that maybe, maybe possibly, potentially gets the understanding of how much he loves you. He loves you more than Barry loved Rockwell. He loves you so much that he gave up his everything so that you can have the right to eternal life. Is there one this morning that needs to know this Jesus that we get so excited about? <laughs> <laughs> 